welcome. My name is Sue from createwithsue.com. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to create a use the offset feature to create some personalized lettering. Whoever you want, really. I'm going to make them quite big in A4 for this, but you can make them any size you want. The instructions really are the same, whatever size you make them. So I want mine in A4. Now, over here, we have in the artboard section of the downloadable version of Canvas Workspace, we have a drop down with a number of different choices depending on what you've got installed with your canvas. So I've got an A4 option on my canvas, which I'm going to use for this because that's what size I want it to fit. This A4 feature comes with uh, when you purchase the printable stickers or also the print to cut uh, ability. It will add this board size. Uh, this is mainly to do with being able to export PDF files. Both of those features, those activation cards, add these, these features. I'm just going to use it as a guide. If you don't have an A4, not to worry. You can work it out by the squares. Just count your squares across. Each one's, uh, at the moment, I've got each one set to an inch. It's in inches. And you can change that grid spacing in the same artboard section if you would like. You can make it bigger. I don't know if you can see that, but see that's quite big. You can just see the square outline. That's at two inches. I usually leave mine at an inch because that matches the mat. So if I want to count the squares on this, I know that those squares will match the mat. So that's why I keep it at an inch. Uh, if you don't use inches, if you use centimetres and millimetres, you can change it to millimetres. 25.4 millimetres. I work in inches, a bit old school, and a lot of countries still use inches. <laughs> um, I, I sometimes work in millimetres as well. It just depends on my mood. We're going to use this tool over here, the text tool. And I'm going to create a big M. Now, I don't want it in that shape in that sorry in that font so I'm just going to pick a fairly standard font uh, antique Oakland and I don't want it that small so I'm going to just stretch it out now you can go into the edit panel and you can change it here and just uh, if you've got the maintain aspect ratio on this will keep it in perspective so you can just click it like that or you can grab these handles on the corner. If you grab the side ones, it'll take it wider or taller. These ones on the corner will take it in proportion. I don't want it quite as tall as A4. And I actually want it to be a little bit longer. So I'm just going to stretch it. Fonts uh, happily stretch quite a bit out, losing their, their nice perspective or their nice look. So you can just make it whatever shape you want that you're happy with. Let's move it into the middle of the board just so good. No, I think I might not have it quite that wide actually. I'll just make it a little narrower and move it into the middle. And now I'm going to create the name. I'm going to make a Matilda because my little granddaughter's a Matilda. So I'm going to create her one of these. Now I don't want this plain, so I'm going to pick a font and I've already picked out that I might like this one here, Calgary Medium Italic. You can scroll down, all your fonts are there, you can just choose which font you like. Some work better than others, a bit of trial and error. If you have any trouble with it wanting to um, alter or edit or cut or weld any of those features, Take the bold away and choose regular if you have that option. That one's only got bold. This one is set on regular and it only has regular. So that's fine, but some have multiple options. The regular usually has no trouble at all. However, the bold may have some issues. All right, once again, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. I just want it to go on the outside a little bit. there and if we want to center it 
come down here I'm in the edit panel again and that's was pretty centered so it didn't move much you can do it uh, at the horizontal as well or the middle and that will move it I don't really like it up there so I'm just going to use my arrow key and move it back down again I like it down here a little bit more but you can have it wherever you like maybe about there I'm pretty happy with that it's going on and what I'm doing it on is an A4 um, clipboard I'm going to make the kids coloring books but put them on a clipboard so they can just pull the pages off as they want instead of having to pull them out of a book and I'm going to make the their own coloring pages so now we want to make a cutout of out of the M so these letters sit with inside the shape or create a shape for the letters to sit inside we scroll down down here at the bottom of the edit panel again we're in the edit got an offset feature can change the size of this to whatever you would like I'm going to leave it at 28 got it on outward because I want to move this out the way a little bit because I want it to go around the outside of the Matilda wording I'm going to keep it round you've got a choice of bevel or round bevel will make it with square edges so I want a more roundy shape for this um, and you can make this choice here as well whether you set, set the lines to draw delete or leave it is I'm just gonna leave it as it is and you can hit see here create an offset offset line around the outer edge so I'm doing it 0.28 go okay and there it is so if you're not happy with that you can undo it just go up here to the undo and undo it just say you want it a little bit different I'll just go and play with that for a minute so you can see some other options offset and we'll just do so we're back to 16 and you can see that's quite a bit smaller Let's zoom in so you can see a bit better. You can see that's quite a bit smaller. I'm going to undo that because I wanted mine large. So to do it, I'll just show you again. Select your what you want to offset around. Choose offset. Make your changes here. Going for 28 again. Choose inward or outward. We're going outward. Round. Leave as is off we go and done so that's not all of it though so what we'll do next we can leave this other these are two well, actually three separate pieces we'll have a look in the layers panel so we've got that piece which is the shape the offset shape that we've just created we've got that one which is the text and we've got this one which is the big M text so I want to select this shape if I hold my control key down I can also select this shape so I've got those two shapes selected so I've done this in the layers panel just then I'll just click away you can do it straight onto your map to hold your control key down and just select that one and you can see here on the right that's what it's selected exactly the same we'll go back into the edit panel it's a very handy panel the edit panel and we're going to choose remove overlap in this instance so you can choose a number of of these to do this so you could choose subtract but this will make a nice easy clean solution for you so I've selected that clicked on that and if I remove this picture side you can see here just move that out let's cut a little hole around where I want to put the Matilda let's add a little bit of color so you can see clearly what's going on so this I'm up in the um, properties panel now and I've gone to fill color and we'll do a big pink M and we'll choose a different color for 
for Matilda. Uh, I can do pale pink. There we go. So you can see that choosing, you can pop this wherever you want when you've put it back together. Um, you can see that choosing a different size offset will make quite a big, big difference to the shape you create here. And this piece here we don't need anymore. We can just delete that. And that's what the design is going to look like when I've completed it. Lots of options to make this your own with the font changes, the different sizes in the offset and different lettering. I'm going to make a couple more. I'm going to make a J for Jacob, a C for Charlie, a H for Henry and a M for Max and a number of others. <laughs> to save it as a, as a CWPRJ, which is a Canvas Workspace workspace project file you can just go save as the canvas workspace project file looks like this cwprj will only work in the downloaded version of canvas it will not work on your cutting machine it's not a cut file in matilda like that and save so it's basically used for design purposes. So when I pull that back into this space, it will come in exactly like this with um, the colouring or the layer, any 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 additional features I've put in here, it will remember those. But to use it for your machine, you would export as FCM and you can send it directly to your machine, but I'm going to save it today. So I'm going to create an FCM file and I'm just going to call it M for Matilda. Just the same. Alright, so I'll just get a new mat and I'll show you what the difference when it comes back in is. So I'll just go new. Now I can open recent and there's my M for Matilda CWPRJ. Looks just the same. Just zoom in a bit. Looks just the same as I saved it. And file a new again and import from your computer and M for Matilda. Now see it's got no colour. So now it is exactly the same file. Zoom in, you can see the same file. It's lost its colour. Oh actually I'll go back in and show you the difference for this. This is very editable. So you could hide that little piece there that piece is gone. So when you're working on other designs um, you can just pick and choose what you would like to center of the A's gone for that one. So it's got quite a good breakdown. You can see all every little piece that will be cut, every little cut line this is in each one. Close the groups up. You can give these names if you want type in here uh, M <laughs> call it whatever you like <laughs> I'll just show you the difference between the other file as well so we'll go new again I don't want to save that and oops open recent get that CWPRJ see there's only two in that same layers panel there's only the two. When you pull in an SVG, often you'll get this look as well. And if you pull it as an FCM, so if you if you have if you want to edit an SVG and make a lot of changes, you could pull it in just like I've done with this design file, and then export it as an FCM file. And then when you bring it back in, it will have all the little pieces that you can edit easily. Okay, and if you want to export it to your machine. Transfer via machine or down the bottom here. You'd get a successful message. And that's done. Alright, I hope you found this tutorial interesting. This can be placed as a, how you think. And I look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial. See you later.